what is up guys welcome to another episode of salty bottom outdoors i'm kevin and uh welcome to my boat review of my 2022 bulls bay 2200 i've been wanting to do this for a while i've been out of town for two months um i've owned the boat since january i was going to do a six month review but it didn't work out so i'm out on the water today i took my uncle and one of his buddies out we're about to go do a little bit of fishing if the wind will let us it's a little stiffer than we were hoping but i think we should be able to get something done but on our way out, we stopped at my great-grandparents' camp. These are my ancestral stomping grounds, a place where I fished my early years all the time. And I don't come here very often anymore, uh, but I'm moving out of state. And it's, it's nice to be back down here. I hadn't seen it in a decade or so. But uh, enough with the pleasantries. We're going to get to the boat. All right, so earlier this year, my express was giving me some problems, so I decided to trade it in and I had shot for months and I found the 22 foot Bulls Bay 2200 was going to fit my needs perfectly. And I found a really good, a really good price at a really good dealership, uh, Furlins Marine in Gaucher, Mississippi. I had to drive two hours to get it, but those guys took care of me and um, they gave me a good deal. They've been a breeze to work with and uh, I'll leave a link down in the description if you want to see what they carry. They carry a lot of different boats, great people, family run business. Um, and they had no problems working with me to uh, make this dream of mine come alive. These are actually the old Sea Pro bowls. And if you know, the old Sea Pros, they were known for a pretty good ride. And I gotta say, I haven't been disappointed yet. I've had it in up to four foot rollers off of Cat Island in Mississippi and barely got splashed. Um, it's a dry riding boat. I gotta say, Bulls Bay was very smart when they made the electric trim tabs standard on this boat because without them it'd be a whole different animal it's got a very steep bow entry and if you get in some rough stuff you can slow down and dig the bow in it'll just cut right through them dry riding hull rides well and as a 22 foot boat fully loaded i've had it in a foot of water with three people on it ice chests and all our gear um, so it floats shallow it rides good it handles well and with a 175 on it I can go, the fastest I've had is almost 50 miles an hour, about 48 and a half, with nothing in it. With a full load, it'll do 44 all day. Um, and it's an efficient hull as well. Uh, you get it to about 30 miles an hour, and it just sips fuel, cruises comfortably. There are a couple of things that I don't care for on this boat overall. And I knew that going in. This is a budget boat. These boats are not ridiculously expensive. They're half the price of some of, you know, the blue waves and stuff like that, blackjacks and whatnot that are comparable in size. But that's what I wanted. I, I'm not running a charter business yet. It, it didn't make sense to me to spend, you know, $1,000 a month on something I'm not making money with. Uh, so a couple of things I don't care for. The fit and finish is not fantastic. I've been told it's better than it used to be. The lids have some noise in them already. You can tell they're just fairly cheaply made. Like I said, it's a budget boat and I plan on upgrading eventually. So that doesn't bother me all that much. Um, it's just one of those things you gotta deal with. Um, another thing I don't really care for, although I understand its purpose, is the deck drains. Now, they're built like this with the little cutout in front. That way, if something goes rolling down the deck, it doesn't go straight into your drain and right out the back of the boat it'll fall into that little divot that's right there. I get the purpose. They are always dirty, they always hold water. So it's a, it's, it's a cosmetic thing that I don't like, but it's just one of those things you gotta deal with. Another thing I'm not overly impressed with is the center console seat. I mean, it's comfortable. Uh, it doesn't have a kick down step, which is annoying, but not a big problem. Um, removable backrest so I can gain two rod holders if I need them, which is nice. The bag underneath it, it's not a compartment, it's actually a bag that Velcro's on, and if you, you can't put a whole lot of weight in it, otherwise the Velcro will come off and just fall through. Um, you know, I carry stuff like my pliers, you know, some lines, stuff like that, light stuff is, you know, it's not gonna, doesn't have to worry about falling through. And the last thing that I'm not crazy about is the rod lockers. They really won't hold anything longer than about six foot, eight inches, and most of my rods are seven foot. Um, which I don't use them all that often. They're, those compartments I use mostly for storing, you know, tackle and gear and whatnot. But if I wanted to put something in there, I'd have to make sure it's one of my shorter rods. Like I said, just an inconvenience thing. It's no big deal. So uh, I'm going to take you on the boat. I'm going to show you a couple things I love about it right quick. And then we're going to get 
back on the water and see if we can dodge some of this wind. It looks like it's coming out the direction where we should be able to fish. Hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, see if I can make another video today. That'd be nice. All right. If you fish at all, this is an absolute necessity. An iPilot trolling motor with spot lock. It is phenomenal. I will never run a boat without spot lock on it ever again. It is awesome. I have not used my anchor once yet. Speaking of anchor, nice big anchor locker with plenty of space to store as long a rope as you need in there. I love the pop-up cleats. This I use as storage, it doubles as an insulated fish box, and as you can see, it's pretty big. A lot of storage space in there. That's where all my tackle is. This is the rod locker I was telling you about. And it'll fit four rods, but like I said, they gotta be six foot eight, six foot six or less, something like that. Nice big live well. It's insulated. I haven't had a problem keeping fish um, bait alive in here at all. Three rod holders on each side of the console. So that's six in the console and four across the back seat. This is what I was talking about. This little net thing. I just keep my, some of my camera gear, boga grips, a couple little things in there. It's just Velcro, which I'm not crazy about, but it is what it is. Like I said, a removable backrest, so you can have up to four rod holders right there. The console itself is well set up. Um, the steering wheel is at a nice, comfortable position. It's not flat or tilted way too far down. Those trim tabs are killer. They are one of the best things about this boat, hands down, one of the best things about this boat. Um, it's got a little bit of storage. This is your batteries, but it's got a little bit of storage under there if you wanted it. You got your uh, battery switch. It's a three position switch. So you got off one, two, and one plus two. That's for your house and your trolling motor batteries um, or cranking in house batteries. Cup holders on each side, which is nice. Now it doesn't have foot rests, but I set my foot up there all the time. And like I said, it doesn't have the kick out. I wish it had the kick down step right here or foot rest. That'd be nice on those longer runs, but it's not bad. Only two rod holders in the gunnel are back there. I guess they're trolling holders. I haven't really used them yet. That's where my power poles are mounted. Power pole motors, and that's your uh, air fuel, excuse me, water fuel separator. Just access to your bilge and your bilge pump back there. Gigantic live well back here. Big live well, lots of space. I actually haven't even used it for anything other than holding drinks since I bought the boat. Um, wash down station built in it's a raw water so it's taking the salt water I'd love to have fresh water but like I said for a budget boat to just have it and it comes with the hose is really nice and I did opt for the twin power poles I do a lot of shallow water fishing and they are fantastic I mean we got a wind coming straight off the bayou this way and I've got the boat it won't touch that dock so it is really nice so overall would I purchase this boat again in the same position? Absolutely, 100% yes. This boat has rarely disappointed me in any capacity that makes me regret buying it. Actually, I don't think it has at all. There's a couple of things I don't care for, a couple of things I wish were a little bit better, but that's what you get when you buy a budget boat. My next boat is gonna be exactly what I want, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hold anything back when I buy it. It's gonna be exactly what I want, exactly how I want it. This one fills my needs perfectly. Now, I haven't had it offshore other than Cat Island yet, well, like I said, I had it in some four foot rollers. I was pretty impressed with it. I'm moving to Florida at the end of this month. So I'll be able to do some offshore fishing. So I'll do an update sometime down the road as to how I feel it handles offshore. Uh, and then one last thing I'm gonna say, and uh, my buddy Dusty Fishco figured this out the hard way, unfortunately, is um, when you're shopping for a boat, don't just look at the boats, find out what kind of trailers they have. The McLean trailer that this boat came with is absolutely fantastic. It's quiet, it rides great, um, and it's got surge brakes. It's real easy to stop. I pull this with a half ton, which isn't a heavy boat. It's not a heavy boat, but the surge brakes definitely help, especially if some idiot pulls out in front of you, which happens way more times. 
something I wish happened, but it does happen. And the surge brakes really help. Uh, my buddy Dusty Fishco got a Frontier, which he's really loving that boat, but the trailer has been giving him problems. It's just not as good a quality trailer. It rattles a lot. It's got subpar tires and wheels on it. It's not bad, it does the job. Just compared to mine, he, he's a little disappointed in it. So make sure you ask what type of trailers they have and research that trailer because that's a lot of what you pay for as well. I mean, the trailer's five to seven grand on a boat this size, depending on the brand. So that difference in price, like, oh, you can get the same boat for $2,000 cheaper over there, but maybe they just have it on a cheaper trailer. Something to look into. All right, so thanks for stopping by this episode of Salty Bottom Outdoors. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoy all my content. Please go over to my channel, check it out. I'll leave a link in the description to Furlands Marine. As I said, if you're interested in them, great people. And I have nothing but nice things to say about the people and the dealership overall. Haven't had a single bad thing to say. Go check them out. Check out my other content. So we're about to jump back in the boat and head out to Lake Pontchartrain and see if it's too too rough to fish hopefully not we're gonna try to get on some big redfish i'm really hoping we get on some redfish because this will be one of the last times i get to fish in louisiana i'm actually leaving for alaska on saturday with my national guard unit and i have a big fly fishing trip planned up there hopefully y'all be seeing that video here in a couple of weeks super excited about that never done anything like it never been that far north i'm a little scared because it's supposed to be cold and i don't like cold so until next time, I'm Kevin, this is Salty Bottom Outdoors. Thanks for joining me on the Louisiana Bayou. I'll see y'all next time.